it's really, really, really easy to save 60% of your income. All you've gotta do is make your coffee at home every single day, never spend money on clothes or anything fun, and then have a really high salary, like at least $100,000 or more. It's that simple. I'm just kidding, that's not exactly how it works. But a lot of people do think that in order to save a lot of your money, you either have to not spend anything at all, like spend no money, or you've gotta make a lot of money. But it doesn't have to work like that. As someone who has been able to save over 60% of my income on a consistent monthly basis in the past, I can tell you exactly what's worked for me. But in order to do that, I'm gonna have to take you on my own personal journey. So let's go. Okay, so when I first graduated from university, moved to Toronto, got my first full-time job in the city, I was making $39,000 a year pre-tax. So that was what was on the contract, actually that's not even what was on the contract, it was an hourly rate, but it ended up being about $39,000 pre-tax or $29,000 take-home pay, which meant that I made in my take-home pay about $2,400 a month. Now with that, my fixed expenses for rent, utilities, hydro, all of that was about $1,025 of that. And then I spent about $500 on groceries, transportation, my phone, other fairly necessary, pretty much fixed expenses. So that was all of that and it left me $875 for anything else that I wanted to spend my money on and any potential savings I was gonna have. Now for some context on me, I grew up, I guess what I'd say, pretty afraid of debt or basically just thinking that debt's a big no-no. And I was really lucky to not have any student loan debt so when I graduated got my first job I really didn't want to ruin that head start I didn't want to put myself into debt that I didn't need to have so I was really conscious about not spending more money than I made but at the same time I wasn't really prioritizing my saving the most because think about it right like this is my new adult life I'm really excited to like spend money on new adult things and like do fun stuff in the city and on the flip side actually too I also had these new stresses and concerns of my new adult life right like when you're 21 22 you feel so old you're concerned about your career Career? Do I know what I'm doing with my life? I'd also just moved in with my boyfriend. Is everything gonna go well? Basically the positives and the negatives both made me end up spending more money than I should have. Now with all that being said, I probably only saved about $200 a month at the time, and this is me thinking back and trying to remember, but it was probably only about 8% of my take home pay. Now after doing that for about six or seven months, I got a new job that bumped my salary up to $46,000 a year pre-tax, which was about $34,000 post-tax. I'm obviously rounding here to keep it simple. And I think my take home pay was about $2,900 a month now. So after at this time, all my expenses stayed the same, nothing really increased on the fixed expenses side, except I did start spending more money now that I had made more money on fun events in Toronto. And I'm not talking about like the free ones, we did a lot of free stuff too, but I also was wanting to go to things that are like $300, which pretty much ate into all that extra money I was making. So I probably kept that same pattern up of spending about that same amount of money for at least a few months in a row, if not more, until I got to the point where I was just feeling super guilty, super stressed about my spending all the time, constantly feeling down about it, and one day Dennis said to me literally like why are you not just budgeting and cutting down on your spending you're already feeling really guilty about it can't really hurt you it's only gonna make you feel better and I remember that moment so well I'm pretty sure I was sitting on the couch he was sitting at the kitchen table and it was like a big light bulb moment for me because I'd budgeted before so why didn't I just create this full budget so I actually think that we should pass it over to Dennis now to explain a little bit more about how it went for me once I had that realization so when Steph started budgeting I had her look through everything that she was spending her money on over those past few months. So basically what that meant was for her to just like hop into her bank account, look through all the different transactions, figure out what they were and how much she was spending on them. Now, funny enough, she actually ended up using the Mint app to see her transactions by category. But for those of you guys who are out there and have literally never done this exercise ever, a really simple and easy way to do this is just hop into your bank account, look through your different transactions, pull them onto a spreadsheet, and just go from there. Now, Steph was just so frustrated after she went through the entire process and was reading through everything. And once again, guys, like, Big warning for you if you are going to be doing this, and once again, we 100% recommend you do this, it can be really easy to just like be super hard on yourself, right? Like, think about it. You're doing the exercise, you already know that you have a problem to begin with, right? You already know that you've been spending a lot. Once you're actually going through it and you're seeing some of the things that you probably didn't even 
think you were spending money on or some some of the things that just kind of slip through the cracks it's so so easy to just continue to be super super hard on yourself and just continue to beat yourself up now luckily for steph she was also already committed to the mindset shift that you absolutely need in order to cut out all these different expenses right so she literally went from buying a random clothing item here random pillow over there to literally completely cutting out those purchases up until the point where she had actually made for example like a formal list taking the time to actually sit back, think about it, and then make the purchase. Remember, once again, guys, this exercise or this activity only helps or hurts you, no one else. So at this point, I'd cut down my expenses a ton and I'd been able to move my savings rate up to 25%, which was a huge jump up at the time and I was super excited and proud about it. And it also relieved a lot of that internal stress and just spending guilt that I was feeling. So after that happened and I was able to cut down my expenses and bring my savings rate up on my own, the next big thing that happened for me was my first big salary increase. Now this one was huge and it brought my income up from $46,000 a year all the way to $60,000 a year. Now that obviously is a huge jump but again, with that $60,000 that I was now making, my take home pay was about 45,000 a year and it ended up being about $3,750 a month. Now what was great about this is it was a huge jump in income, a huge jump in monthly income too, almost a thousand extra dollars a month. And on top of that, I was doing a really good job at budgeting, my expenses were lower, and I wasn't letting myself lifestyle creep anymore. So basically I was making more money, I wasn't spending more money, and it allowed me to jump my savings rate up, double it actually, and jump it up to 50% of my income per month for the very first time. The other thing that was really cool at the time about the timing of getting this big salary increase and my savings rate jumping up so much is that it was also around the same time that we started posting YouTube videos about our money. So I was able to really hold myself accountable in this new way and I was specifically saving exactly 52% of my income. It's fun because we have that video for me to know exactly where it was at at that time. And on top of that, I still had exactly $250 a month in my budget for the fun stuff like coffee shops, restaurant, buying different things like clothes, whatever it might have been. I still had a good healthy amount that I had set in my budget for that too at that time. This is another big lesson in the story so far and I really wanna make sure you guys hear this one so make sure that you're listening up. Saving 60% of your income can sound super intimidating and especially if you have a low income yourself and I totally hear that. But as you can see from my story so far, I was only saving about 8% of my income when I had a low income myself. It actually took me almost doubling my salary from $39,000 to $60,000 pre-tax, so my overall salary, not my take-home pay. It took me basically doubling it in order to increase my savings rate substantially from 8% to 52%. Now, a small, small amount of that was actually me doing things I could to cut down my expenses myself and save some money by reducing those expenses. But a large part of that was increasing my salary and growing my income by so much. Now, just because I'm saying that growing my income was a huge factor in actually being able to increase my salary, like my salary, my savings rate by so much, it doesn't mean that it's easy to do that, right? It doesn't mean that it just happens in a year that you're able to bring your salary up so much. In my case, I had a 25% salary increase, which is obviously not super common. It was based on the circumstance of me having a low salary and it needing to be adjusted. And that's not gonna happen for everyone. That's just my story. But the main point here isn't having it happen in one year. It's not about the timeline. What you can do for now is first focus on reducing those expenses, doing what you can to bring your savings rate up just a little bit, right? From 8% to 25, that's still a big impact. And then focus over a course of a few years on actually growing your income. Actually, I wanna get to that part of our story right now. So at the same time that Steph's income was going up, mine was like for sure going up too. So eventually what happened is she landed at a salary of $72,000 and then I landed at a salary of $78,000. Now, the beauty behind our incomes going up was that our expenses remained relatively the same. So that translated into her having a 60% savings rate and I had a 70% savings rate. Now, once again, our salaries, right, where they would have continued to go up and our expenses would have remained relatively the same for the long term. So that number would have just kept going up and going up. Now, for a lot of you guys that are out here watching who either have corporate jobs or you're just employed in general, here are the steps that you should probably follow if you wanna save a higher percentage of your income. First, you have to be disciplined with yourself and you have to have that mindset shift that we were talking about earlier. So think about it this way. Like we, we typically like to look at it this way and word it this way. So you don't have to save, right? If you don't save, life might be a little bit harder for you down the line. You know, you might have to work forever. You know, you, you might be one of those people who's really stressed out whenever an unexpected expense comes up. Once again, you don't have to save. 
Instead, you get to save. And we're talking about the money that you can save. We're talking about the willingness to actually take that leap and actually start saving for yourself. We're not talking about saving 80% of your income. We're not talking about saving thousands of you know dollars a month. At first, it's literally just that, that, that one step, right? That willingness to actually go forward. Once you've done that, then it's on to cutting down your typical expenses, right? Like if you go in and you do the exercise of hopping into your bank account, downloading all the different transactions, if you're looking through it and you're seeing all these different expenses, you're seeing Uber Eats here, Uber Eats over there, right? If you're seeing all these expenses where some of them you don't even remember making, cut it out and save what you can for now. And then it's on to growing your income from there, right? Like this is where you're gonna be able to see those savings rates jump from 40, 50, 60%, or even even higher, right? And then honestly, that kind of brings us back into where we are now. We took increasing our income to a new level when we quit our corporate jobs in order to work for ourselves and hopefully bring our income up to a level that was higher than it ever could have been in those old jobs. Now, it was definitely a little bit more of a risk because our income and our savings rate went down a little, or at least it stopped growing at that same steady pace in the short term. But over time, as our income does grow more and more and as our expenses stay the same, that means our saving rate's gonna be able to go up to 70%, 80%, 90%, who knows how high. And that's exactly what it's about for us, getting our income to a place where it's high enough that we and enjoy our time, try new things, have less stress for us and our families, but still have that savings rate be high enough that we're saving and investing money that then works hard for us and that continues on from there. Basically, we're laying the groundwork for a strong money system in our future and you can do that too. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on this video. We hope that you guys liked it. Um, hopefully you guys liked it as much as we liked filming it. And as usual, you guys already know what's up. Make sure you like down below if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe. And yeah, make sure you check out our previous video also on our first year, kind of like the recap on how it's been since we went full in on the self-employed life. Um, yeah, uh, make sure you check out that video next door over there, there, and we will be back. You know the vibes, let's go. Thank you.